Welcome to a very special episode of Influencing Safety with Bill Martin, the president and CEO of Think Tank Project LLC. I'm Kate Wade, the editor of Incident Prevention Magazine and your host for this podcast. I'm super excited about this episode because we are live here at the IP Utility Safety Conference and Expo in Orlando, Florida for our biggest show ever. And I'm also super excited because Bill and I get to chat face to face in person instead of our usual Zoom calls. So what we're talking about today um, is actually about the conference. And, you know, Bill and I have been talking about how this is a great conference. There are a lot of other great conferences for uh, safety people, people in the industry. Um, And so we have all this great information. But we want to talk about, like, what are we missing to translate that information into what's needed to change the serious injury and fatality rates in our industry today? So I want to um, introduce Bill and welcome him back and get into it. Welcome back to the podcast, Bill. Thanks, Kate. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Good to be seen. Yeah. So tell me about your experience so far at the conference. I know you've done a couple of presentations. You've been sitting in on things. Like, what's your overall vibe about the show? So first, I got to say, um, and I'm not just saying this, but incident prevention, this, this is one of the best incident prevention conferences I've ever been to. And they just continue to get better. I mean, I, how many people are here? I think our attendance was around 350 or three. Yeah. yeah. So, so I mean, I think in my session and the session before me, there was like 80 people in there. It, yeah, there were a lot of people this morning yeah, in your session so, with Steve and Cheryl. So we're, we're uh, I, I, and, and the, the keynote was really good. I can't remember his name. Uh, Dale Lizinski from Deval State. Yeah, so, so. The, the fact that he offered an actionable thing to do, of course, that was our first podcast, actionable. Yeah, actionable safety. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, he's talking about looking at somebody, hey, you're going to need to get your safety glasses, and you hold your four fingers up, because that's the four four most important people that he's going to do it for, mm-hmm. right? To make sure, and, one, and the first one's him. Yep. Right? And and that's an action that creates an action, and I, and I really like that. Um, some of the other talks were really good, though. I went to the hop talk, which was really good on human performance. I just came from summer. Ra- that was Josh. I can't think of Josh's last name. Uh, Hodges. I Josh think. Hodges. Yeah, he was very personable and and horny uh, and talking about predictions. And of course, I'm I, I'm biased because of predictions because when we spend all our time on the tail end trying to prevent the thing from ever happening again, we may not be spending enough time creating an environment where it doesn't happen at all. Happen at all. So. So what's really, I, I, it just the conferences are getting better, the content's getting better, but the statistics have stayed the same. Right, they basically kind of flatlined. Yeah, and it's almost eleven or twelve years now, almost twenty, but, but it's changed almost not at all, and it may have even gone up a little bit. So, so I'm convinced it's not the message, because we have some brilliant people here and in other conferences right now. I think there might be a NECA conference going on right now at the same time. I think there is. Yeah. So and there's some brilliant things going on there. I believe there's a there's a translation problem. If the message of the cure doesn't meet the language of the worker, then somewhere it's the translation's broken. So I'm what I was talking about, I did a I did a four hour pre conference workshop mm-hmm. on the formula for workers worker centered safety, which is um that's a little confusing for your listener. What the heck is that? You know, I talk about how um medicine is patient centered. Education is student-centered, and it seems like safety at work is management-centered. Like we keep dumping this next scenario or next initiative on our workers, but we're not asking them for their input. We just, this is what's next. So that's that's what that was about, basically. And uh, and it gives you some tools to give to your workforce to get them to test and evaluate the initiative. And then if they see value in it, it's their job to implement it, and you, and you get feedback every week, and and it's it has to do with uh, the book Atomic Habits habit stacking, because if you already do a job brief, you just add a three minute little thing to try to do this small tactic. So I have a question. Um, you know, you're saying that a lot of times uh, these companies are are more management centered than worker centered. So when you're talking about trying to move it from management centered to worker centered. How do you actually get management to sign on so that these things that you're talking about are even an option for the crews? 
So I partnered with a small company and uh, uh, actually Cheryl Richardson and Steve Martin talk, spoke today for H. Richardson and Sons. And they're in New York. Right? Yeah, in Augensburg, New York. And and I partnered with their company um, and th they were vulnerable and courageous enough really to try a new tactic. And that's, so let's think about that. If we don't try something new, I'm okay if it doesn't work. But we need to find a model change, not just a tactic. Because if you don't try something new, then we're going to, I can pretty much predict how many people will die and get injured this year. Oh, well, yeah, because um, during the keynote lunch today with David McPeak, he read some uh, excerpts from like the, I don't know, some kind of lineman's handbook from back in the 50s. Um, and they were talking about how do you tell if like something's hot? Well, the first thing you do is touch it with your finger. And the second thing you do is taste it with your tongue. And if we always did things the same way we always did them, we would still be, you know, licking and, and touching uh, to tell voltage, which is obviously not what we do. Um, so we do actually evolve over time. We're not doing the same things over and over, but how do we actually get to the stuff that's really going to make an impact? Right. In, in past um, influencing safety episodes, Kate, we talked about how the safety stand down, really every serious injury in our country has had a safety stand down and every serious injury had a job brief. And then we think, well, we got to redo the job brief because it must be the job brief that's causing it. But we're we're grasping at straws trying to figure it out. And I, I, I think we're missing the opportunity uh, to fix it. And your question, which I'm almost trying to avoid because it's so hard, <laughs> is how do you get management to buy in? That's really hard because management feels like there, there's nobody in management that I know of that wants people to get hurt. Mm -mm. But if they don't create all right, I, I, I'm going to leak here a little bit from what I did. So, so we have a certain biology that's the same in all of us. Eight billion people on the planet, and if I make you angry, anybody angry, they release the same neurobiochemical, right? In all, in all of them, and if it's serious enough, it will bypass their thinking ability and go right to an action, because we've evolved a hundred thousand years to. Not be eaten by the lion. All right, we got that lizard brains. So. so, so if we don't make an effort to get the right biology released in the people who are receiving the message, it's harder for the message to translate. Does that make sense to you? It does make sense to me. I I think a lot of, I'm not sure if this is true or not, but I think a lot of like what we're trying to do is sort of, in terms of the things that we have going on today in safety. Um, Oh my God, my train of thought is terrible. Um, and I took a nap, you guys. So, uh, no, I, so what I wanted to say, I think, uh, is that we're kind of like fighting against how our bodies actually work. Like the things that we're implementing and the policies and the procedures are sometimes counter to how we actually function as humans. And so maybe we have to focus more on how can we connect as humans. Um, and not to say that the other stuff isn't important, but it's like we need to use the things that are in us and the way that we work to reach our highest potential. So so that's the, what I was talking about today was don't start with why, the formula to release your highest potential, right? Or to unlock your highest potential. Because we, I started with these, the idea of the seeds. Have I talked about the seeds on the podcast before? The corn seeds yeah. and the sunflower seeds? Yeah. Yes, yeah. a couple. So, so, so right. So the two seeds... Uh, have a whole bunch of potential. They look completely different. They're different sizes, shapes, and colors. They're genetically coded to grow two completely different plants. One's a sunflower, one's a corn, right? A corn, that's probably not grammatically clear. <laughs> uh, so what they're genetically designed to grow two completely different plants, but the formula to release their potential is exactly the same. And then once you know the formula, you can either release, you can release their formula, release their potential by planting them, or you can suppress it by just doing nothing. Doing nothing suppresses their potential. Or I can throw toss them to the wind, and depending on where they land will depend their future potential, right? Mm -hmm. That's why you see corn stalks growing in people's gutters. Oh, my God, they grow everywhere. Right, right. So so what if it's not the message? It's not the best intentions. All around the country, people, and we've talked about the job brief ad nauseum, every, every company has a different job brief. 
the tools are the same, the work is the same, the bucket trucks are the same, and the, and the lineman or worker or stations worker can move from one company to another. But everybody's job brief is different because we think in, in our efforts to fix this, oh, I got to make the job brief better. And then the energy wheel, another excellent uh, idea. It, it, so the idea is excellent, but the translation is difficult, right? Because it's talking about predictions. Those are predictions of source controls. And that's a really good idea. But that means we have to change the language of the entire industry to speak in source controls, right? That's I, something that takes time if, if people want to even do it. You I, know? And there'll be pockets that do it, right? But we have a higher potential than that. I, I'll give you an example. I mentioned today, we are all born with amazing human potential. And I asked if anybody was skeptical, and I said, well, let's look at human language as an example, right? Right now across our planet, children are simultaneously learning 7,139 languages across 195 countries by age five. Who is teaching them, Kate? Their, well, their family, is their an environment? No, community? no, they're, we're designed to learn language. Depending where you are born, you're designed to learn that language, and it's not even words. When we speak, we vibrate the air that vibrates our eardrum that makes vibrations and electrical signals that our brain interprets. So nobody's teaching. Our brain is, in order for you to survive this environment, you need to learn how to communicate. And, you're, you, and you, what you do is you control the big adult. You say, you learn two words. What's this? And you point. And you make the big adult point. Oh, um, coffee cup. And you laugh, ha, 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 right? Then you smile again. What's this? Uh, dog. And, and, and then eventually you start getting dog because your brain is teaching you that if I say dog, uh, Tally Sherritt from uh, The Influential Mind, well, one chapter she, she talks about her baby and her, they didn't name it. So they put a whole bunch of things on the table and figuring whatever she would grab would kind of lean towards what, her, what the name is. And so she had been talking on her phone. She sets her phone down. And every time her baby grabbed the iPhone because the iPhone was what was important to her mother. Yep. Right. So, and nobody's teaching us that we're, that's in our, we're born with that potential. So why don't we work with that? If we have that potential, then let's not suppress it. Let's release it. Right? Well, and that's, I think also what Dale Lizinski was talking about yesterday. It's by nature, we're not like, humans aren't like super safe. You know what I mean? Our, our tendency is not to necessarily look or for or do the safest thing, but it's, it's that connection piece that can really, you know, me unlocking potential in you and you unlocking potential in me and not us connecting together and syncing um, is what's going to help keep us safe. I asked the people today, if they're parents, they said, yeah. I said, Hey, when you do good, does your family do good? They said, yeah. I said, that's actually a logical, logic statement, you know, logic, Two plus three is five, and three plus two is five. If a lot, if a statement is logically true, mm -hmm. then the, then the converse of that statement has to be true. So if you do better and your family does better, then that means when your family does better, you do better. Is that true? He said, "Yeah." He said, "Then why?" It's the same for a team or a crew or a relationship, right? So instead of releasing the wrong biology in somebody by saying, "Hey, dude, you're stupid," right? That immediately puts them in defense. Defense immediately causes in, in, our, in our entire world justification and rationalization. Because I can say, hey, why did you do that, Kate? And you're going to say, well, because, and you're going to go backwards in time to justify and rationalize the decision you made. And it's kind of a waste of time because we can't change the past, which is what you're talking about. Something you made in the past is the past. So in order to move forward, we have to release the other, the curiosity Yep. Chemicals. Be curious, not judgmental. Right. So if you're curious, now we're looking at logic, reason, and intuition, and we're moving forward. I mean, so I hate to pick on the government, right? Why? But <laughs> but but if you if you look at the government, um, and I ask young people this, do, do they look smart to you? And they say, well, not really. And they're very polite, but not really. And <laughs> that's more polite than I would be. But but they're stuck. They're stuck at a level, at a low cognitive level because they're pushing each other's buttons and pushing each other in defense so they have to justify their position all the time. How do you move forward with logic and reason when you're moving backwards justifying and rationalizing? Well, I can't. 
So if, and then if we, I did this today too. I, I asked a bunch of guys, hey, has anybody ever pissed you off? Anybody really made you angry? Oh, yeah, yeah. I said, so you understand that's not possible, right? And a couple of people kind of had a wake up call. Um, I'm not sure they appreciated it, honestly. But I said, look, that means I'm going to come over with my puppet strings and attach them to your brain. Show me anger. Oh, cool. Show me happiness. Oh, show me sadness. So I'm in control of your emotion, right? Because you're not, evidently, because I can make you angry. Um, and that was kind of a wake-up call. And, you know, it's like the violin. If you don't practice this, it's not, it's not easy. You have to practice not being triggered. And Mel Robbins, the uh, five-second rule, it's a TED Talk book. It's a TED Talk and a book. Um, and Daniel Kahneman talks about system one and system two thinking. System two is slower, right? That's the one where you're getting out to, you're rushing out to go somewhere and you turn the key in your ignition and you go, did I turn off the oven? You just switched to the slow mode. And now you have a choice. I can either ruminate about my house burning down for the rest of the day, or I can go back in and fix and double check, right? So our day, uh, what's his name? Victor Frankl. Oh, yeah. Uh, the space between stimulus and response yep. is time. You know, Kahneman, system two is time. The space is time. We did that podcast on time, right? Um, the five second rule is time. So when you say to me, you know, Mr. Martin, I've had enough. Oh, I'm going to call you Mr. Martin. When you're mad, you might. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and, and I just, I, I go silent for three seconds. And then I say, you know, Kate, I'm really glad you're comfortable enough to tell me that you're angry. Um, I don't really understand why you're angry and I'm not angry, but I'm curious and interested why you might be. Please tell me more. That's not coming from my reaction. That's coming from the person who's aware of my emotion, mm -hmm. not my emotion. So we talked, this is some of the things we talked about. And, and honestly, uh, Kate, that your, your, your IP is vulnerable and courageous enough to do a podcast on this because I asked about 80 people today, have you had this talk anywhere in the country yet? The answer was no. I mean, that's cool, but also a little disheartening, I guess. Well, I, to me, that to me, that's that means this is low hanging fruit, mm -hmm. because I'm okay if I'm wrong, but if it's something that we're not doing, that may create the bridge between this great information and applying it at the work level. I I, I think it's worth a try. So what, what I left them with was some some things to try. And, uh, and I, some of them have my email, let me know. And honestly, the feedback I got was really good today. I mean, um, one text I just got was mind blowing. Uh, and I gave corn seeds out. Another guy pulled a took corn seed out of his pocket and said, I'm keeping this for the rest of my life. I mean, it, uh, you need a physical manifestation to change your mind. So the corn seed in your pocket is an instant reminder when you touch it, mm -hmm. right? So there's all, it's, it's a little hard for your listener to understand just from this conversation, but and I think it's part of a larger conversation, too. And I think, you know, we do these influencing safety podcasts and we do talk about some of the same things over and over again. But it's like it's I think it's just super important stuff that we need to be talking about. And I think there's something to be said, too, for um, this is like about people being with other people and people connecting with other people and not just about, you know, a policy or a procedure or the new Kool-Aid um, that they're reading about it's you know and I think a lot of us because just by the nature of what our world is like is we want that connection with other people give us ways to do it so that we can become stronger and more cohesive and that's going to help us all out so what you're talking about is connecting right and, mm -hmm. and I, I was a little vulnerable today I told some of my own personal history today because I told him my, so my wife has cancer she's doing really well she has multiple myeloma she's had a stem cell transplant uh, but when she spent a month in Dana Farber, and I'm driving back because I would row every morning with on the Charles, mm -hmm. and then spend 12 hours in the hospital for a month, and you know, and of course, if you wait a milli microsecond at a green light in a busy traffic area, the next guy behind you is on his horn, right? Yes, he is. And uh, and and I'm like, this guy wouldn't do that to me if he if he understood that I might be a little distracted, and if I'm a, have a crew or a team or a, at work, I should be vulnerable enough to tell him, look. I need you to watch my back because I might be distracted because of this going on, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of it's perception. So I did tell a funny story because uh, I don't want to tell sad stories without a funny story. Um, when my kids were really little, we were in Cape Cod and Cape Cod has bumper to bumper of traffic. On Route 6. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and it was one of those times when 
the guy laid on the horn right after me, beep, 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 beep. And my kids are in the back. Why is he doing that, daddy? I said, oh, oh. I said, you know how excited you are about being on vacation? They said, yeah, well, when people are happy and are on vacation, that's what they do. They beat their horn. So I'm just going to beat my horn, beep, beep. And you turn and wave and smile at that and, <laughs> and let them know that you're happy you're on vacation. And then anytime anybody beeped at me for the next 10 years, they waved at the cars. Oh my smiled. God, I love that. <laughs> so, so it's all perception. We decide what our emotion is because we're not our emotion. And when, by changing their perception, it and because they were happy, we didn't get frustrated either. We thought it was pretty funny. Of course, I don't think the guy behind us felt it was funny. But I can't, for him, right? I can't control what he thinks. I can only control what I think. So we, when we allow people to trigger us, um, that's not us. That's our emotion. And when we take a moment or a breath or the Mel Robbins five second rule or whatever, we can actually respond as us in a tone. It's like dropping the rope in a tug of war. You know, I, 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 we need to be curious and interested, not judgmental. I don't have to like you. I don't even have to like your idea or the reason you're mad. I need to understand, look, uh, you know, I know you want me to react, but I'm not going to because I don't need to defend myself. I'm pretty happy with me. Um, it, yeah. And do you think all of these things that we're talking about, I, I go back to like the age thing because, you know, we have people who come into the industry, you know, 18, 20, 22. Um, you know, we're older now. We've had, you know, 20 or 30 years of experience doing living life and doing what we're doing. Um so it like how do we teach like the younger generation this kind of stuff if if what they're seeing right now is the older generation not necessarily knowing how to do these things so here's what i did today um in my in my group and i and i said look every generation has a higher iq than the one before it mm -hmm. now at my age it makes me the dumbest person in the room every time right and i and when i then i say in the and I'm going to tell you something. And to the people my age in the room, I said, I'm apologizing ahead of time. I'm a baby boomer and I'm sorry. And as soon as I say that, young people smile, right? Because nobody ever says that. And I tell them, look, I'm not apologizing for me. I'm apologizing because my generation is modeling an unsustainable future for you. We're modeling defense. And if you doubt me, just watch the government at work. And because of mirror neurons, if I cross my arms, so will you. So you are mimicking that behavior, whether you like it or not. And what you need to understand, I tell them, your brilliant, one brilliant neuron from you screaming alone in a parking lot isn't going to change the world. But when you learn how to connect, my generation is teaching you how not to connect. When you learn how to connect and be curious, you got that generation is brilliant. They're going to do things I can't imagine. But we're not modeling the right behavior. So this whole idea... If we model the right thing, if you do well, in your, then your family does well, right? Yep. So we should be trying to raise the potential of everyone around us because it works both ways, not suppress it, mm -hmm. right? And I, I did the thing with the corn, right? I, the corn seed, I can suppress, all I got to do is put the seed in my pocket and do nothing. And that corn seed with all its potential doesn't do anything. But if you give it put it in the ground, you give it the right soil, the right water, the right amount of sunlight. And what I like to say, the, the formula is the same because the biology of the two different seeds is this. You, I, I mentioned snowflakes today. Every snowflake has, I'm not talking about people. Oh, I was like liberal snowflakes no, no, or actual no, no, snowflakes? Right, right. <laughs> every snowflake is a different shape. Different, yeah. right? it's, every snowflake has a different shape. They're beautiful, right? Um, and they're completely different. But they all melt at 32 degrees. Because of the same biology, they have the same formula. We are exact, we, we're designed exactly the same. You know, if you took your brain out of your head and we laid them all on the table and left the room and come back in, we might be somebody else when we put the brain back in, right? Because we wouldn't know who we are. We, the brains don't look any different. Right. Right. So I, you mentioned the younger generation. I, I think we need help getting them connected because they'll figure it out when they get connected. Now, we've done this thing. If I say finger licking, you see the word good in a chicken. Yeah. Right? When we connect, it raises our consciousness and our and our and our our uh, cognitive ability, which is why when I ask them, "Does the government look smart to you?" they laugh. <laughs> I mean, it's hard not to laugh these days. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. really not a good model. And, and and I did tell them this too. I, and if you allow your cognitive load to go to twenty four hour streaming news or go to the political scene, 
I'm sorry for you because you have no control over anything in your life on that 24 hour news. You can't change it all. And if you're voting for president this year, you vote every four years. That means in 40 years, you've had 10 inputs mm -hmm. to the U.S. government. That's it. So I... I, well, I it also lends itself to that whole thing where I, really we need to be focused on the smaller because it's just as important, if not more important, that we're voting in our local elections and our state elections. And it's the same, I think, with line crews. It's like we need to focus on our group and our team and our company. We can't be worried about what everyone else is doing. We need to start with us first before we can build that out. So the system people will, would argue with you that we need to fix the system. And, and, and I'm okay with that. So create a system that creates an environment that makes it safe. Because I, I, I don't want to make people angry, but safety is actually a product of the environment we create. We think safety is the thing that makes the environment. It's not. The environment creates, makes it safe. So, and, and all the things apply still in safety. And the beauty is we can still continue doing anything that you're liking that you're doing. Mm -hmm. And we can do these little small tactics and start to change us. Well, yeah. Um, Sharon Lipinski wrote an article for us that's going to be coming out. And one of the things that she said was that uh, the same things that make a uh, place a good or great place to work are the same things that make it a safe place to work. Um, and so I think that is sort of the same kind of thing that you're saying. So you're, when we use logic, that if something is true, the converse has to be true. Mm -hmm. And that's so we can use that in a lot of things that we're doing and the converse isn't true because there's a difference between social reality and physical reality. We've had this discussion mm -hmm. in other podcasts if people want to go back and listen. But we social con reality is opinion. And we can have all the opinions we want, but it doesn't mean it's true. It just means, and then when we agree, it doesn't mean we're right. It just means we agree on the opinion. You know, and, and I love human performance. I love hot principles, uh, but I'm focusing a little bit more on human potential instead of human performance. Mm -hmm. Because I think we have way more human potential than we're even aware of. You know, our, we are, the human is a satellite dish. It, that's what we are. We pick up all kinds of information. And in front of us, right in front of us is almost an infinite amount of information every moment of the day. So when we tell our brain, this is kind of funny, Kate. I'm not sure if you're aware of this. But did you know your brain does everything you tell it? All the time? <laughs> sure. Don't tell anybody. Okay. <laughs> So, so when we tell our brain to do something, its job, the subconscious that process, so processes 11 million bits of information a second, now will point out to you the things that are important to achieve that. And, and I, I think the, the bottom line, if we want to look, look at this, if we can control our emotions so that we can release the right biology in each other, I don't, I don't, think, I don't think we're stoppable. I, I think you're going to see this, the trends change. And now all this really good information, because it's all good, will start to translate because we're not blocking it with a bunch of different chemicals in different bodies. We, we it's called synchrony. And when you watch it in a in a football team, they win. When you listen into an orchestra, they sound beautiful, right? When we have a team that's together on the same wavelength, they do amazing things. And when there's a disruption, it doesn't go well. Bill, thank you so much for your time today. Um, and I hope that we get an opportunity to talk more about this sometime in the near future. Um, I also want to thank our listeners for spending their time with us today. I hope that you'll join Bill and I again soon for our next episode of Influencing Safety. In the meantime, stay safe and be well. Howdy, partners. The IP Utility Safety Conference is hightailing into Dallas, Texas, this October 22nd through the 24th. Register today at utilitysafetyconference.com. The views, information, and opinions expressed during this podcast are solely those of the individuals involved and do not necessarily represent those of Utility Business Media and its employees. It is strongly recommended that you discuss any actions or policy changes with your company management prior to implementation.